Welcome back. This is Metropole Business Center. My name is Stephen Kimani, and on this part of the show, we delve into uh, a new report that Google has released, and that is a year in search lists for the year 2020. And the lists are compilations of all searches that have been done in the year for countries across the world, and that includes Kenya. Data from Google Trends is used to build up the top trending list of searches, and the lists are categorized into, uh, categorized into top trending general searches, local and global personalities, deaths and health searches, and other categories that include uh, trending movies and TV shows, spots, how-tos, and what is. And uh, let's just take a look at uh, the list of the top things that Kenyans searched for in 2020. And we begin with uh, the trending general queries. At number one is the English, uh, English excuse my <laughs> vernacular, the English Premier League. Uh, we also have the U.S. elections also coming in as a trending general query. Uh, number three, we have thank you coronavirus helpers. I'm sure you can remember early, early in the year as the pandemic was um, um, spreading across the world. Coronavirus in Kenya, number four. Uh, and schools reopening in Kenya. And there, was also, there were also queries around coronavirus in Tanzania, uh, given the mystery that was there around um, the number of cases and, of course, um, general um, uh, questions around the accountability of the Tanzanian government around it. Also, UK uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson was among the top, top 10 trending general queries. Remember, he also contracted the COVID-19 uh, virus, coronavirus in Italy. I'm sure you can remember the devastating images from that country um, when the pandemic hit. Um, the, we also have at number nine, the impeachment hearings on the Kirinyaga County Governor, um, Anne Waiguru, and at number 10 was a London Marathon. Now let's take a look at the top 10 trending local personalities. At number one, Miguna Miguna, uh, followed by Babu Owino, Raphael Tuju, who has made quite some news on the political front this year, Joan Kubai, I'm sure in social media, um, there was quite a wave and uh, talk about her. Mutahi Kagwe, I mean, who doesn't remember the colorful phrases that Mutahi Kagwe has made this year? I mean, you can get it, I can get it, you know, being one of them. Oscar Sudi, also on the political front. I mean, the man has made quite some waves with very hard-hitting statements that I will not mention here. Uh, we also have Dr. Masi Mwangangi, the Chief Administrative Secretary uh, in the Ministry of Health who also made quite some news and trended um, among the local personalities. At number eight, Willis Raburu, fellow media personality at, at uh, the Royal Media Services. Moses Kuria, so on the political front, uh, was among the local trending, uh, trending local personalities. And uh, the Education Cabinet Secretary, Professor George Magoha, was also on the list at number 10. Let's take a look now at the top, tre top 10 trending global personalities. At number one, is a U.S. President-elect, Joe Biden. Number two, you have uh, North Korea's leader, King Kim Jong-un. Number three, you have uh, the U.S. Vice President-elect, uh, Kamala Harris. You also have at number four, the U.K. Prime Minister, Boris Johnson. At number five, with Mike Oliver. Number six, Prince Charles. At number seven, Felicia Kabuga, who was finally captured this year and uh, is currently facing trial. At number eight is the Tanzania's president, uh, John Joseph Pombe Magufuli. Number nine, Mikel Arteta. That's, I'm sure people in the football circles will probably say why he trended. And at number 10, we have Jack Ma, the billionaire Chinese uh, uh, businessman, the man behind Alibaba. Let's take a look at the top 10 trending losses, uh, people who um, passed on this year. Number one, we had Papa Shirandula, um, who was a comedian. Number two, basketball, U.S. basketball legend Kobe Bryant, who died early this year, along with his daughter and uh, a number of his friends in a helicopter crash. At number three, we have Kenya's second president, former president Daniel Torochi Charap Moy. Number four, Professor Ken Walibora, who was a renowned uh, Kiswahili scholar and also media personality. Number five, Kenny Rogers, who uh, was a country uh, music uh, legend. Number six, um, Chadwick Boseman, um, 
I mean, having watched the Black Panthers, I mean, his loss definitely came as a surprise to many. We also had uh, the loss of Papa Dennis, who was a local gospel artist. Um, number eight, we have Nye Rivera. Number nine, George Floyd. And number 10, Tekra Moigai, who uh, was a daughter of, uh, Kari, uh, of the Kiroche Breweries Managing Director, Tabitha Karanja. Top 10 trending health queries. Of course, at number one is coronavirus. Um, we sort of have queries at number two, on quarantine. Number three, deck. Dexamethasone, that was one of the drugs that was being touted as um, a, a, a treatment um, to the COVID-19. Number four, Pfizer, um, trended on the health queries. Remember, they've just come up uh, along with BioNTech, with the vaccine that has been approved and is already being uh, um, distributed in the United Kingdom. At number five, vitamin C. I'm sure the relationship there with Coronavirus, very clear. Kemsa came at number six, uh, thanks to the, own, the scandal that broke out there regarding procurement of uh, COVID-19 related items. At number seven, cro uh, chloroquine, which is also a, one of the medicines that has been, uh, had been um, touted as a remedy to COVID-19. Uh, the word asymptomatic also featured on the trending health queries, and so did sanitizer, and ventilator. Let's move on now to the top 10 trending movies and TV shows. I'll just go very quickly. Money Heist came as num number one. Number two, we have a local soap, Maria, that has been quite the rave in Kenya. Uh, Ringo, also, I think it's a Mexican soap, really uh, caught quite some attention. Extraction, uh, so among the movies uh, trended. Contagion, at number five, Blood and Water. At number six, Nazar, which is an Indian uh, soap, also caught uh, some attention, trended uh, online. Raised by Wolves. At number eight, The Witcher. At number nine, and Cast at number ten. Let's now, now turn to matters sports. Uh, the top ten trending sports queries. Number one, the English Premier League, um, followed by UEFA Champions League. The Syria League, Euro Europa League at number four, La Liga at number five, uh, Bruno Fernandes also trended uh, on the sports queries, the FA Cup, uh, the NBA at, at number eight, uh, William Borges at number nine, and Kai Havert at number ten. Uh, let's now switch to the top ten trending general how-to queries, and at number one was how to file nil returns. Um, followed by how to open a PDF file. I'm sure this has been really influenced by working from home. Uh, number three, how to check NHIF status. I mean, with health concerns uh, mounting this year, definitely people, and I must confess I'm one of them, uh, who are checking our NH NHIF statuses. Um, how to write a report. Uh, looks quite work-related. At number five, how to play chess. At number six, how to style braids. And number seven, how to register a company in Kenya. At number eight, and this probably comes closer home, uh, given that we work very closely with the Metropole Credit Reference Bureau, how to clear from a CRB. At number nine, how to download music. And at number 10, how to plant onions. Um, looking now at the, tech, the top 10 trending tech how to queries. Number one, how to fill TPAD online. How to create a website came as number two. How to connect a phone to TV that came at number three. How to make my electric plate cooker work came at number four. Number five, how to take a screenshot on a laptop. And at number six, how to create a PayPal account, uh, considering that also people who are really moving online in terms of work. Number seven, how to open a bin file. Number eight, how to create a YouTube channel. Definitely, we've seen a lot of activity on YouTube. Content creators really coming on board. Number nine, how to save photos on Google. And at number 10, how to create an email account. And finally, on the top 10 trending, now we are looking at the what is queries, the top 10. At number one, what is coronavirus? At number two, what is curfew? Number three, what is happening in Nigeria? Remember the recent uh, violence and upheavals that took place there. Number four, what is Halloween? 
which is a US holiday. Um, number five, what is fever? A basic query, what is fever? Number six, there are also queries of what is BBI? Number seven, what is my IP? Uh, number eight, what is entanglement? Number nine, what is hunter virus? And at number 10, what is quarantine? So those are the what is queries that trended this year here in Kenya. And now joining me to discuss these top trends and searches on Google is Dorothy Ooko, the head of communications and public affairs Africa at Google. Welcome, Dorothy. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Very well. That was quite a list in terms of things that people have been searching online. But probably I'll, I'll know, begin... I was smiling. I was smiling as you're saying I'm one of them. <laughs> um, <laughs> probably from where you sit, what are some of the notable changes you have seen in the Google trends, particularly in Kenya, if you compare with previous years? Very interesting. No, some things have been pretty much the same. So one thing for sure, Kenyans love for football, EPL, is without you know, measure because if you look at the global trends, the number one searching trend general was what is coronavirus and number two was US elections. In Kenya, the number one was English Premier League. It doesn't matter whether the virus was there or not, it has remained unchanged. Our love for football, for EPL, whether there is a virus, whether there are U.S. elections, it's number one. So that was quite interesting because it showed how some things don't change, you know, um, and that's our love for football. The other thing has been how to lose weight. I think with the lockdown, we've all put on a few inches and everyone wanted to know how to lose weight or lose the belly fat. So that is the one thing that hasn't really change so um i was surprised because i thought that well that would change a bit but i think those are sort of the same things how to file meal returns every year is a trending item people want to know how to file meal returns um i think if i was the KRA commission i need to find a way of helping kenyans file meal returns because it's it's a consistent query that is asked but what was new, I think, was was a lot of the questions had to do with coronavirus. So, you know, what is the virus? What is asymptomatic? Everything around the virus or which countries, if you look at, we were checking, you know, the state of the virus in Italy. Uh, why is Tanzania not doing the same? So it, our minds were preoccupied with coronavirus and this is also supports what the global trend is that um this coronavirus has taken over the way we are thinking the way we are looking the what we are doing and so that was for me that has been so you could tell that there is a pandemic and this pandemic has almost driven people to do all these things the other thing that is very um that stands out also is some things are just the same in terms of how to cook the interests were the same but probably more heightened with the fact that you're locked down you're at home you're not going to work you've got kids you need to know how to cook so there was a, a you know a spike if you looked at it in terms of people wanting to know how to cook stuff and lots of local stuff you know how to cook omena you know just you know, the pancakes, how to cook broccoli. That was a new one. You know, people wanted to know how to cook new things. And so you could you could sense a trend. That was the first time we had broccoli. But mandazis are always there. Pancakes are always there. And then we had um, a few of the things. So I think that that would be it. But coronavirus did take our hearts and minds. Very well. Um, probably what... What would you read from the trends um, that we've just outlined about online mm -hmm. behavior in Kenya? Um, has it, prob I mean, are people going more and more online for information compared to previous years? Um, I wouldn't say that. I, I, we say that, you know, every month we have billions of searches on, 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 on Google and every year there are trillions of searches. So 
the volume of search hasn't gone. What happens is what whatever happens offline or online pushes people online. So if you look at the trend right now, you will you will see, for instance, what is entanglement, which came at number 10 uh, about the Smiths. It's like people saw that and people then went online. What does this mean? People wanted to find out more. So whatever happens online or on social media will push will push um, people to go and find out. We had a, a, a doodle on thanking coronavirus frontline workers. And I think Kenyans went, you know, clicked on that link. People wanted to find out how to help frontline workers. And so if you put it out there, people will then go and find out, you know, what is it about that? So a lot of uh, whatever happens online pushes people. If you look at how to play chess, which is the Netflix effect as well. How to Play Chess was pushed by the Netflix uh, series, The Queen's Gambit. And that has been the global trend, even the whole world over, everyone was how to play chess became the most searched query on the how to. And so in that sense, the whole world, we are almost the same. Whatever happens, people are intrigued and people go online to be able to find out what is it. So how to play chess was really as a result of the Netflix series, The Queen's Gambit. Um, a lot of the stuff um, as well, uh, the scandals, if you look at the people, the personalities, the local personalities, a lot of them, is there's a change of, there was a scandal and people needed to know and new people went online to find out more. Whether they were dead or it was just uh, a rumor people went to find out what that was and so for me it's a lot of what happens online pushes people online to search and find out more whatever happens on social media joan kubai for instance that was the instagram kid who was sort of showing people her home and dancing people it was on instagram then it was on twitter and then people now were you know on google search wanting to find out more and that's what we see, that social pushes people online. News pushes people online. So whatever news is on Metropole TV today, you give me the headline, but I want to go and find out more, and therefore I go online to, to, to find out more and find out the details and find out the background that you may not have time to give me on, on TV. That's a very interesting insight, Dorothy. Thank Probably... You. Moving on, um, this year has seen um, a new phenomenon, working from home. You know, you don't necessarily have to be in the office to, to do your work. And I'm just wondering whether that shift helped um, or influenced the search trends this year on Google. Right, that's a very interesting question because if I look at what people were looking at so for instance the general trend people are checking when schools were reopening um i think that as a people went online so we have these trends every month that we share and every month we send them out to you monthly trends yes we did notice for instance google classroom was one consistent monthly search trend because people wanted to find out how to work that. You also read one of the trends, which was how to connect my phone to the TV, which has to do with parents being at home. We cannot share this phone. Is there a way I can be able to plug it so that the kids can be able to use the TV screen? So yes, you could tell that some of them, the fact that people are online, people are looking for things that would be able to engage either the children or at home, and you'd be able to see that. But what we saw was, a spike in the cooking, uh, in the YouTube cooking videos where for, for some reason, I don't know if you tried, but people were going online to find out how to cook. So spike in the number of cooking videos that people were watching. And we had one of those um, trends we released a month ago, just an increase in um, all the cooking videos in Kenya that people were looking at. And they're all local, you know. Very well. You, 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 you mentioned the issue about, you know, homeschooling and uh, Google Classroom. Right. Probably you could just um, tell us what the uptake has been. I mean, there, there has been that shift. I mean, initially before the Education CS uh, cancelled the entire school calendar, there was 
a deliberate shift um, by, right. by schools to take class online. Has that happened now on the Google Classrooms platform? Right, we have seen that. There's a school in, um, in Eldoret called Little Lamb that, for instance, when they shift, when the shift happened, they went on Google Classroom. The schools around them had not sort of figured it out, how to go online because you needed to have laptops and they didn't have. And what they did was then they found a way of getting the other schools to come and use their resources and um, uh, in, in payment, they would exchange something, but they then enabled a whole community, a whole county to be able to access that. So Little Lamb was a good, uh, has been a good example. We've also seen um, some schools, Plainsview School, Rusenga, for instance, that have adopted, just moved, took it, and parents, kids, and the school teachers have just gone around and are using it and are saying, even if the virus is over, we still want to be able to use tech because it has been just amazing. Parents have been involved. They have known what's happening. And so we, we really see that. I am truly impressed because Metropolitan, you've invited me on a Google, you know, meet as well. Really unique because I think a lot of, um, a lot of the interviews I've done have been, you know, either on Zoom, but it is just so refreshing to see you are on Meet with, you sent me the Meet link. I'm like, yeah. So we are seeing the, the options. There are many options and just seeing what works and everyone wants to do something that works, that is easy and they're able to manage. And so I think that even after the virus, there's some you know online habits that will stay, which is how are people able to work online and people trust that we can have this interview, like you and I, I would have had to come to the studio. But now here we are talking, having an interview, and it's okay. And that's a new way of working. Very well. Before I move to my last question, I probably need also to raise this. There, there's, there's also concern around cyber security. And th that right. has really been increasing. In fact, in the earlier stories, um, there, there have been surveys showing that indeed there are people who have experienced um, Mm -hmm. cybercrime while working. Probably could tell us what are some of the safety features that are within the Google platforms that probably mm -hmm. people can hook on to be able to work online but safely. Right. Thank you. Thank you for that. I think online safety is truly one thing that we have to educate people. So one of the things I tell people, because a lot of times people call me and go, I think we've been hacked, someone has, and it happened especially during this lockdown, a lot of people, creators would call me my YouTube channel, someone has hijacked it. So the first thing I ask people, do you have a double authentication? So we have an authenticator, which means that when you sign in, you, when you go to your privacy settings, so there's a little wheel, it looks like a wheel, when you tap on it in your account, and sometimes people are lazy to do that, but it's good to take time for you to be safe. When you type on the settings, there's a privacy setting and you can enable double authentic uh, authentication. It means that if someone signs into your account, you will be notified in a phone. It will say, there's a Mac that's trying to log in for Mombasa. Is that you? Yes or no? And you can go, no. And immediately it's blocked. But a lot of times we are not doing the double authentication. It means that no one can sign into your account. If they haven't if they don't have your phone number because you get the notification. So you set it and say, anytime there's a sign in, please let me know. Send it to this phone number. And that's one of the key things that I tell everyone. Make sure you have that enabled, that any sign in into your account, into your Gmail account, that you are notified. It's important. And so that's and then the other thing we tell people is also choosing passwords that are easy. Don't, don't use something like coronavirus that, you know, people are going to someone will go, okay, or using your name, you know, Douglas. People use, we, we try and say that's not, a, that's a very easy password. So it must be combined with a capital letter, some characters, some numbers. And sometimes we'll suggest that for you to make it really hard for someone. So it's not your birthday, it's not your mom's birthday. It's, it's a random number that no one will be able to guess and will tell you this is good. And, and we, we offer that as well and say, 
would you want to use this because this one no one will be able to get so password is really one of the ways where um people need to be very careful and they need to enable this in their privacy settings it takes time do it once and for all so you're safe i have and less then, than a minute yeah i have less than a minute and we need to wind this up what are some yeah. of the insights that probably businesses can now pick from this uh, the, the, the trends and the searches this year that they can take right. into next year as they strategize on how to reach out to online communities in under a minute. Excellent, qu excellent question. So one of the things we are doing right now, we just we launched something called uh, People Card. It calls if you tell Google, add me to Google, and you're a small business, it will be able to create a, a link for you. So I said send Sukuma on this river road. This is my phone number. You can get Sukumas delivered to your house. And now when I Google you, I'll be able to find you. I can call you right there. So you're creating your presence and the presence of your business online and making the world be able to contact you and you can deliver. Thanks a lot, Dorothy. Thank you so much for having me. All right. I've been speaking with Dorothy Orko, who's the head of communications and public affairs, Africa at Google on these years. Uh, on what Kenya searched, what Kenyan searched for this year on Google, and really, it's been an interesting list of things that Kenyans have been looking for. But really, as Dorothy said, football remains king in Kenya, more specifically, the English Premier League. And I've said that very slowly. So let's now take a short break <laughs> at this point, and after this break, we'll be joined by um, Joe, my colleague Joe um, Wanjara, who'll be taking us through this week's gadget review.